Well, good morning and welcome to Herman University and the last day of summer, if you can believe it, just flew by. And uh, I wanted to discuss, um, <clears throat> you know, pool playing injuries because uh, one of our great superstar players, uh, Neil Spyan, and uh, also another one, Johnny Mora, uh, both dealing with these uh, injuries that are disabling them and uh, putting them on the bench to the point where they're talking even um, John has uh, spoken the word retirement uh, and he's uh, very young. But what happens is um, when you play excessive amounts of pool for many years and <clears throat> you acquire um, what I believe to be uh, muscle memory, muscle memory in relationship to um, the turning of the neck constantly and the bending down constantly and the elbow bent and the wrist uh, affecting the uh, nerve in the muscle in that elbow area, uh, creating tennis elbow, which is a, it's a deli it, it hurts. And it can put you out uh, of commission. And there's really very little um, to uh, the process of healing uh, without rest. Um, if you don't rest it, then the healing, it's, it's not going to happen. You can get cortisone shots and, and get resolved a little bit, but it requires rest. And that goes with the neck as well. Um, twisting of the neck constantly, and you have to have rest so that the muscles get back to normal, and they're not always twisting uh, like you're uh, playing pool. So, um, uh, we'll talk about it. I haven't played in a while, so I'm going to enjoy playing. This is a song we uh, sang and danced to uh, at the party at Plain Ridge.
have to shut up. Let's see your moves now. Come on, we ain't done yet. Come on. moves down if you really want to hit the floor you know what I mean you gotta Okay. 
montarlo, aquí tengo la pieza. Thank you. 
get like this, I can't be around you. I'm too little to dim down and I'm Cause I can do the things that I'm gonna do. Wow, wow, wow. Wow, 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 Things to rest, cause you don't need it like the 68 Jets. Diamonds and nothing when I'm rocking with you. Diamonds and nothing when I'm shining with you. Just keep it white and black as if I'm your sister. I'm too hip to hop around, time to hit with you. I know I get wow, wow, wow. Taken. I heard it got these other niggas going crazy. Yeah, I treat you like a lady, lady. Fuck you till you burned out, creation. Make it crazy, yeah, Wu Tang. Throw that ass back, Wu Tang. Call me and I can get it too. I can tell you gone off the doors. Oh, yeah, yeah. Careful, mama, why would you say? You talking to me like a new babe. You talking like you trying to do things. Now that party got to run it like she you say, baby. You made me drown in it. Ooh, touche, baby. I'm carrying that water, Bobby Boucher, baby. And you know I'm a slaughter like I'm Jason. That's the way you got it on safety. Wipe your way, sit on ground. Now. I probably shouldn't be around you. Cause you get wild, wild, wild. You looking like there's nothing that you won't do. But you won't do. Hey, girl, that's when I told you. When I was you, all I get is wild thoughts. Wow, wow, wow. Wow, wow, wow. I'm gonna put the moon on. See how we do here. Let's take our time tonight. Girl. 
<laughs> well, it's a high energy um, music, and when you're uh, first coming out for the day, I think it's more important to burn calories than it is to uh, do anything else. And in order to burn calories, you have to be at a high uh, movement for more than 15 minutes. So that was the idea of playing um, high energy music. Now, I haven't been playing a lot of pool because of all of the injuries that um, I discussed for many years uh, continue to be nagging and require rest. And you're not going to get better um, getting cortisone shots and, and, and going in that room or painkillers or something of that nature. But anyhow, um, as we discussed a little bit earlier about Johnny Mora and uh, Neil's now in dangerous uh, position because he can't play. Uh, he's got tennis elbow. Tennis elbow is what's uh, bothering Niels. And Johnny Mora, the youngster out of Canada, whose mother and father are both pros, uh, they are suffering, um, uh, he's suffering from neck uh, injury. These are so common. And uh, back injuries are also very, very common uh, pool injuries. And it's caused by... I believe muscle memory, uh, because you're always twisting your neck, your elbow's always crooked, you're always moving your wrist, which affects your um, elbow and the nerves and the muscles. And I acquired all of these injuries um, uh, that John Mora has and Niels now is, uh, Niels is in real uh, danger because a lot of times you try to play through these injuries and if you overdo it those injuries really become very very serious um, especially um, tennis elbow uh, you wouldn't think of it being that big a deal uh, yet it is it's um, disabling um, I've had it in both arms because this is what I did for a living for many years. And watching uh, youngsters do what I did and do it in a different manner, of course, a uh, different era. Um, it's, it's nice, it's nice to see, but it's, uh, it's a tough road. It's a tough road and if you stay in there uh, trying to survive, uh, you've got to play a lot of pool. And uh, when you start to play a lot of pool, these injuries, uh, that's when they occur. Now, Niels uh, right now is, in the, is on the disabled list and is not able to play, but I guarantee you prior to this, uh, this was common injury for him uh, because it is a common injury. And the only way uh, you're going to get better is rest. And... He isn't going to play in Romania in that big event, but still, um, he's going for treatment, and he's hoping to, to play soon, trying to get well fast. And this is not an injury that you can uh, rush. It just isn't. Um, it requires too much rest, uh, because what's happening is the muscle memory in the forearm in the, in the top of the forearm thinks that the one muscle belongs on top of the other because it's always bent and you're always twisting your, your wrist. And if you do that, you'll see the muscles uh, start to move in that forearm area. And that's where the pain exists. Uh, you would think it's in the elbow, uh, which it is. But the pain shoots right down the front of the arm. And it's excru it, it hurts, it hurts. And um, there's no cure for it except rest. And I've been through most of all of the PTs and steroids and shots and cortisone. Um, 
and nothing resolves it but rest. And when you do rest, it does resolve it. It does resolve it. But um, a lot of us try to play through it, especially young, young players, uh, will tend not to um, take it too serious and ignore it and get right back into action. When the best thing is to be resting it, they're getting aggressively into the rehab and they end up coming back too quickly so that the healing process never takes place. Although you may have relieved the pain for a short time, um, the healing process actually never takes place. And after you take the uh, cortisone shot and you're all better, you think, uh, very shortly after that it comes back and it's worse than it was before because you haven't rested it. And it's requiring, you know, that uh, leave me alone kind of thing, you know. So, and the neck, it's the same thing with the neck. Um, very dangerous situation in the neck. Uh, we know Ginky had surgery and Allison Fisher and Jeanette. We have so many people with neck injuries that went for surgery uh, you can get again go in for nerve root shots um, and try to resolve it that way um, it does take away the pain temporarily and the problem is it doesn't resolve the problem because you haven't rested enough uh, so that's when you heard John Morris say he was retiring. I'm sure it was related to uh, the neck injury that he has and the seriousness of uh, getting better. And it wasn't going to get better if he continued to play. So he needed to take time out. And he needs to stay, uh, you know, a good, good length of time so that he can, so that he can heal. And Niels is going to have to do the same thing, and that's going to affect um, his, um, definitely going to affect his year, uh, U.S. Open, because uh, U.S. Open is um, October. He's, he doesn't have enough time to heal for that. Um, luckily, it doesn't matter for his Moscone Cup uh, points because uh, there is no Moscone Cup points at the U.S. Open this year. I don't know if it gets any stupider than that, uh, but no U.S. Open uh, points for Moscone. Um, I don't think it matters because um, Johan is choosing who he wants to choose uh, regardless of points. I don't think the points are anything other than the top 10 he gets to pick from, but he can pick anybody from the top 10. Um, I personally think Earl uh, should be on the team. Uh, yeah, yeah, his attitude is honest and, you know, he um, shows his true feelings and stuff, but that's, um, that's what it is. Um, I probably wouldn't be a whole lot different uh, as far as uh, attitude-wise um, if I had the gall to go to the level that he's at. I mean, I don't think I'd go that, that far, but um, I can understand this frustration and, and so forth and so on. I mean, um, and Matchroom shouldn't be involved anyhow uh, for our team. They should be involved as the promoter, but as far as the getting involved into the picking of the team and captains and all of that stuff, I don't think they should be involved. Um, it's hurting uh, the industry and it's hurting that event uh, terribly. Uh, Luke Riches should be uh, doing something else, uh, promoting the event and not getting involved with uh, managing the managers and telling everybody what to do and if they don't do what he says then they're not going to be involved and um, I think this will be the last time we'll see the Moscone Cup event in um, uh, being played actually um, I think it's played out to a point now where um, you know
know, if you get a coach coming from Ethiopia and coaching for the United States for some reason or another, as if we need them, um, uh, that's that means the end. I mean, that's that is the end. I mean. It, I'm an American. I don't want to be represented by somebody else when it comes to pool. This ain't gymnastics. This is pool. This is something we know about. This ain't gymnastics, which we didn't know about. So, of course, we needed uh, coaching. But this is not gymnastics. This is pool, and we, have, we know pool. We don't need outsider coming in to tell us how to you know, prepare our players. You know what the problem is? Is that young people in the United States have too much to do other than play pool. And uh, the long uh, time of not being able to play pool until you were 21. So you, ne you never built up any passion or interest to the sport because by the time you were 21, you were in college and doing other things. So you didn't really have a chance to develop like you see these young players from Taiwan and the Philippines where they have 12-year-olds and just making every shot they shoot. Well, of course, that's the idea of training the young players. And, and you couldn't get into the pool room. I remember how I used to sneak in and hope that the owner wasn't there and I would sneak in when he wasn't and I made friends with the desk guy to let me in and yeah, I remember all that. Well, that's the reason I was good. And they can't do, they, you know, you couldn't do that. My dad was a pool player, so I was like in with the in crowd or whatever. Um, so that was, the, you know, that's the deal. It's not like they're any special than, uh, than the Americans. It's just that we do not play pool as young people like they do. And that matters. I mean, they don't want to play us in baseball and basketball and football. You see what I'm saying? Hockey. That would be ridiculous. So, of course, they're going to be the best players. They have the best roots and the best training. And in the Philippines, of course, is where they play at the youngest and are encouraged to play. Are encouraged to play. So it's, it's you know, you're not, you, you can't say they're not the best players in the world when they have the best training and roots. And uh, those are the best players. Efren Reyes, Francisco Bustamante, and everybody else. Uh, included. There's so many great plays out of the Philippines. But, what I, but I honestly believe that when we're talking the Moscone Cup, we're talking adults. And I would rather lose with an American coach than win with a coach that won with Europe. I, I just can't, I don't get it. I can't do that. I mentally can't get into it. And, and I'm not saying he's a bad coach, good coach. I don't care. That's not where my heart and soul is, and I can't. It's like rooting for the Yankees. That's not going to happen. I mean, come on. I'm not going to root for the Yankees. I'm not going to root for anybody but the Red Sox, who, by the way, are in first place and about to uh, win the pennant. And uh, the Yankees are uh, fighting with the other teams. So it's pretty interesting how Boston has become a tremendous sports town. And New York has become a lot of hot air. And I think in pool there are a lot of hot air too over there, to be honest with you. Um, because uh, it just is. You know, those guys aren't as good as they say they are, and so forth and so on. But I don't want to get into all that, but I did a lot of competition with New York players. And, um, I mean, Ginky was very special, and, you know, Tony was good. Um, Frankie was good, but um, a lot of the players now that we're seeing, because of the handicapping system, 
have uh, pumped them up so much. And you see, the thing is, if you go into a room um, and they don't have billiard tables, you're going to lack so much. It's unbelievable. So a young player coming up now and in pool, they don't play a lot of billiards. Like when I grew up, we played a lot of billiards. So that, that, that's a real, that hurts a lot when they play internationally. They can't compete. They don't have the touches. They don't have the speed. They don't, have the, they don't read the speed well. And that's why uh, they can't win in Asia, especially Americans I'm talking. They don't even compete because uh, they can't compete even to go to Asia. Yet, um, you know, talking about Asia and talking about China, in spe you know, specifically, I have been in very strong negotiations, and of course, you know that I wanted to switch over and go into the Chinese eight ball table and so forth and so on. Um, started with Joy, ended up with Star, and have a good relationship, but I got to tell you what's been going on, uh, to be honest with you. Um, one of the main things um, is, number one, now that Trump's president, there's, 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 there's li liability of a pot potential 28% tax on anything coming from China. But even more than that is, as much as China has been trying to um, get our attention and paid a lot of money and keeps coming here and Joy keeps doing whatever they can to get our attention. Um, the organization that was created over there, the CBSA, uh, the China Billiard Snooker Association, I believe, uh, that, that uh, is involved with the Chinese eight ball. Because as you know, the Chinese eight ball table is actually a snooker table um, just cut down to four and a half by nine. Uh, really, that's all it is, and they're using American balls. So, I mean, that's what it is. So, if you're a snooker player, you really love playing Chinese eight ball because you're so familiar with it. The only thing you may not be familiar with is if you don't play pool, you won't be familiar with the balls. Um, but other than that, um, which is big in a way, you know, but you'd like to have a snooker background in this uh, game, which I don't. But anyhow, the CBSA, which held the tournament in May, which I was invited to play and be, I wouldn't even have to do anything uh, as far as qualifying. I hate to admit that, um, you know, that's the case, uh, but that was the case. Uh, USA wasn't all that well represented. And uh, they felt I would have been a good representative uh, because I was so uh, much involved with the promotion or trying to promote the Chinese eight ball table, uh, which I believed would have been a very good idea uh, to bring to the United States and develop a professional league and be able to um, play on a much harder condition, uh, which would have made the game much more appealing. Well, anyhow, I got sick, so I kind of fell out of it a little bit. I ended up catching coronary artery disease and diabetes, both at the same time. So I'm in recovery, and um, I wasn't able to close many of the deals, so I didn't go in May. Um, and what happened was, it was a world championship and it was quite a bit of money uh, added. Again, like it was 100,000 for first, it was 50 for second, 25 for third. Um, getting a, right to the point is, is that happened in May and no, they, they haven't been paid. They have not paid. Um, that was a WPA sanctioned event as well, um, and the sanction fees were not paid either. Um, so, 
it's really a weird uh, situation. Um, I don't know um, whether China is going to be something we can deal with. Um, it's a difficult situation. Uh, let me get her out. Come on, kid. Well, anyhow, that's the scoop. Um, they weren't paid yet. Nobody's been paid yet. Uh, if you go to AZ, they have a little bit of an article where Ian uh, Anderson sent a letter to Ch China, the CBSA, wanting some kind of response, and they didn't get anything from them. They didn't get a reply, nothing. So, you know, as much as they've been giving and everything and lost so much money trying to promote um, this in the United States, I think now um, it's payback time and I think that they're realizing that the investment that they made, um, I believe they think that it was a bad deal. They believe that um, they're not going to get supported uh, by uh, the United States and the table is going to be very difficult uh, to import here and they didn't expect it to go as poorly as it's been going. Um, we know that there's one table in New Jersey, but I mean it's not like he's ordering Chinese eight ball tables. This, this guy, uh, Ed Ladaw, he picked the table up uh, loosely because it was the last one left in Las Vegas. And um, he scooped it up, I'm sure, for a song and a dance. And he's promoting, trying to promote them, but uh, he's not buying any more tables. And if he's not buying any more tables, and if he's not committing to the business, but he's promoting it as if somebody else should get in it, is kind of scratching the head kind of stuff. Because uh, you have to wonder what the heck he's doing. I mean, if you're going to promote it, get, in, get into it, you know, buy five or six tables and, and you know, get in the kitchen and don't be afraid to get burnt, if, you know, if that's the case. But if you believe in the product, don't go telling somebody else to do it when, when you're in the position to, to get the best deal and you're not doing it. Do what I say, not as I do, kind of thing, you know. And I'm not a big player in stuff like that. You have to be, um, you know, you have to be able to do what, what you... Uh, a saying. You're telling others to get involved and you need to get involved. You know, in a, in a little bit more ways than one table um, if you're going to tell others to get involved. You know. Well, that's my belief on that one anyhow. And the fact that the Chinese eight ball table is not taken off And we have this non-payment issue, and we have Trump and other countries charging tremendous fees now to bring China products here. Um, that's what that's that's putting me on a hold pattern. And also, what else I had planned was, of course, not of course, but. I'm not an alcohol guy, and um, I would have liked to have been involved with the um, recreational marijuana uh, bill that just went by, and it's free to smoke pot in Massachusetts, and uh, I would love to have a room 
with a beautiful restaurant with beautiful Chinese eight ball tables and a dispensary, a medical dispensary of marijuana and uh, maybe uh, a beer and wine as well. Beer and wine as well. But I wouldn't um, want hard liquor. Uh, but that's my goal and I'm waiting for, for even the dispensaries to get relieved of uh, restrictions. Once that happens, we'll be able to go forward. I've got a good guy with a Mediterranean restaurant background and he's got a little money behind him and I'm ready to rumble. Um, but uh, that's the plan. Um, and I do plan on using Chinese eight ball tables, maybe. Because if not, then um, I don't think the table is that important. Although um, it is a game changer. It would change the industry a little bit, you know. Well, I think it would anyhow. I'm pretty sure it would. Um, well, <laughs> All right. Well, I want you to enjoy this tune, uh, one that we danced crazily to at the party. Despacito.
Enjoy your day. I love you. God bless you.